Right, so Israel is on the brink of disaster, such as the warning that has just been given to Benjamin Netanyahu by the head of Israel's own security forces, Shin Bet, a chap called Ronan Barr. But interestingly, this time the threat he is warning Israel's genocidal prime minister about is not so much an external threat from the likes of Iran, who are still keeping the world guessing about whether, if or when, they will strike back over the assassination Israel carried out in Tehran, Though this time the threat is presenting itself from within the nation's borders itself, in a manner of speaking at any rate, since this pertains to the occupied Palestinian territories themselves. Where so much of the focus is on the Gaza Strip, increasing unrest in the West Bank, being driven in no small part by the actions of hardline far-right government ministers and those loyal to them, have driven Israelis to commit more and more blatant examples of what too often get called nationalistic crimes, to what he, the head of Shin Bet, is now calling Jewish terror. And if something isn't done to rein their own people in, disaster, he thinks, is certain to follow. Right, so Shin Bet, perhaps a bit less well known than, say, the IDF, but where the Israeli Defence Force is basically the military, Shin Bet are internal security. Not quite the police, that's separate again, but sort of a middle ground between a military and police presence within Israel itself. They're also one of the three intelligence agencies in Israel, aside from Amman, which is military intelligence, and Mossad, which is foreign intelligence. Shin Bet covers domestic intelligence. Everything to do with Shin Bet is internal affairs. It's all within Israel's borders. But when you're policing an apartheid state, whatever your particular remit might be, that's not saying much for your idea of maintaining law and order and justice right now, is it? However, Shin Bet boss Ronan Barr has written, to, uh, written a letter to Benjamin Netanyahu not only pointing out the worsening atrocities being committed in the West Bank by Israelis, by settlers, but that because so much of this is actively being supported and enthused upon by the authorities, it is encouraging matters to worsen that it is causing indescribably serious damage to Israel's reputation. I thought to myself, well, how much more can it possibly be damaged? But then caught myself because this Israeli administration has proven time and time again, it can absolutely manage that, changing Israel in his view beyond recognition. Here's the most salient portion of Barr's letter. What is a really damning communication, actually, to Netanyahu and several of his other ministers. I am writing you this letter in pain, in deep fear. As a Jew, as an Israeli, and as a security official, I learned about the increasing phenomenon of Jewish terrorism by the Hilltop Youth. The Hilltop Youth phenomenon has long created a significant amount of terrorism towards Palestinians. With the deterioration of this security situation, and the inability of the police to enforce the law, and perhaps hidden encouragement from them, the phenomenon is changing and becoming more significant. From the work of individuals, it is now taken up by hundreds. There is no longer a fear of executive detention due to the good conditions they receive there. Along with the money they receive when freed and the praise they receive from members of the Knesset, alongside the delegitimization of security services. It has moved from secretive and narrow activity to open and large-scale organisation. Sometimes it is due to the use of weapons provided by the state, from avoiding the security forces to attacking them, from disconnecting from the establishment to receiving support from parts of the establishment. The answer is not the Shin Bet. The Shin Bet is a band-aid designed to deal with a small group of extremists. It cannot deal with the root of the problem. What is needed is a coalition of navigators, including ministers, government departments, rabbis and regional leaders. Without that, it might make right. The leaders of this movement attempted to bring the system to a total loss of control. We are on the verge of a process that will change our reality. The damage to Israel and to most of the settlers is beyond description. 1. Global delegitimization even amongst our closest friends. 2. Significant IDF forces are needed and they are already struggling to meet operational needs. 3. Revenge attacks that will launch another front in the already existing multi-front war. 4. The entry of new elements in the terror cycle that were out of it. 5. A slippery slope towards lawlessness. 6. Difficulty in creating regional alliances against the Shiite axis. 7. Above all, it is a stain on Judaism and all of us. Continuing in this direction will lead to a great amount of bloodshed and change the face of Israel into something unrecognisable. He's not a happy chappy with his bosses. He, in no uncertain terms, wants something done about it too, having seen the hilltop youth phenomenon, which I suppose you could compare to the likes of the English Defence League and other groups just like them. Disparate racists committing domestic terrorism against people the government functionally doesn't care about, though. 
The same sort of ideology that led to the rioting in this country recently, in my view, which was encouraged in the in the West Bank during the 1990s and continued on to today, where Ronan Barr is highlighting that they are getting more and more emboldened, that where once it was the work of a handful of individuals, they now operate in their hundreds, where once their illegal activities met with appropriate punishment, that is no longer a deterrent, when they basically get awarded with such a good conditions in prison, along with money once they are freed, and praise from the Knesset, from ministers, because it's full of completely deranged politicians. Where the security forces get delegitimized, those Domestic terrorists are lionized, where before they operated on a small scale, they now launch large operations against Palestinians in the West Bank. Where there is only Shin Bet, who are compared to a band-aid for this problem, there needs to be concerted unified efforts between security forces, religious leaders, politicians to try and bring this issue to heel. But that requires a government willing to listen. And as Barr's letter has pointed out, that is no small part due to the actions of some government ministers. And in fact, this letter of Barr's was purposely not sent to one of them, cutting them out of the loop here entirely because he firmly blames them as being completely part of the problem here and not the solution. And for those following internal Israeli politics these days, the fact that the individual Barr ignored was a certain Itamar Ben Gavir probably wouldn't surprise you at all. Of course, Ben Gavir is part of the problem. You only need to look at his most recent raid on the Al-Aqsa compound on Temple Mount, where he and other hard-right supporters marched up to the complex, where the rules are that only Muslims may pray there, and of course they then very much violated that by taking to prayer themselves. Not Ben Gavir's first trip up the mount to cause as much offence as possible to Muslims, to Palestinians, and unlikely to be the last if he's given a chance. Ben Gavir's reaction to this letter when he found out about it was to demand Ronan Barr be sacked, but then when others, notably Yoav Gallant and Benjamin Netanyahu, defended him, he stormed off in a huff. Ben Gavir really is a spoilt brat of a man. You might wonder if you're familiar with Ben Gavir's role in Israeli government being the security minister as to whether he isn't actually in, the guy in charge of Shin Bet at this point. But actually no, Ben Gavir was much too dangerous to be given control of them. He got given the police or, well, a sort of second police force to Shin Bet, or a secret police force, as it were, to go around with. But not so secret, but just as terrifying as that moniker sort of gives you the impression of. Ronan Barr made no secret of what he thought of Ben Gavir's private police force as well, turning a blind eye and letting these matches fester, tantamount to supporting Hilltop youth in their inaction. But one of the biggest attacks in recent days by these so-called Hilltop youth was upon the northern West Bank village of Jit, Whereas settlers in the West Bank would attack people in small numbers previously, now they attack in their dozens, and they do so armed as well. Because Ben Gavir had handed out guns to civilians and fast-tracked arms licenses like they were going out of fashion. So it's a little wonder they are now turning up armed to turn on Palestinians. Was, as seems inevitable, such arms end up in the hands of people who should never possess them. Well, such is what happened a week ago in Jit. Dozens of mass settlers attacked the village and a 23-year-old man was killed, along with dozens more being injured. Between October 7th and August 12th, according to the United Nations Humanitarian Affairs Office, the OCHA, almost 600 Palestinians have been killed in the West Bank by Israeli forces or settlers. And it seems a figure that's only going to rise and rise faster if the warnings of Ronan Barr are not heeded. And frankly, they aren't when words of condemnation are issued, but no action ever follows up. And then even if it does, and anyone is arrested, they will do their time in luxury, it seems, and get paid for it, in effect, when their time is up. Ben Gavir, meanwhile, is advocating still for the execution of Palestinians they hold to free up space in their presence. Quite the difference when many Palestinians are, of course, held for years on end by Israel without charge, basically being hostages. But when are there ever demands for their release? If the West Bank explodes into violence triggered by settlers and crackpot Israeli ministers and this hilltop youth outfit, Israel in large part clearly only has itself to blame here for allowing things to get this far. Of course, those supporting the Israeli genocidal regime have to take their own share of responsibility for what the state has got away with. Certainly over the last 10 months, as more eyes have been opened, and that of course means our government here in the UK too, be it the now deservedly departed Tory one, or the last seven weeks of the red Tory one, the Labour-led one. Labour led by a Zionist without qualification as it is in Keir Starmer. But his government's alleged involvement in war crimes, documented since the resignation of a senior foreign office diplomat, has just got even messier. As you can find out all the latest details about it in this video recommendation here to watch next, I hope. And I will hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.